The following program contains scenes and images that may be offensive to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Visit Art Omai's Pippa Garner exhibition, Sell Yourself. Artist Steven Tyson discusses his work. And catch a performance from Hilltop. It's all ahead on this episode of Aha! A House for Arts. Funding for AHA has been provided by your contribution and by contributions to the WMHT Venture Fund. Contributors include the Leo Cox Beach Philanthropic Foundation, Chet and Karen Alpelka, Robert and Doris Fisher-Melisardi, and the Robeson Family Foundation. At m and Bank, we understand that the vitality of our communities is crucial to our continued success. That's why we take an active role in our community. MIT Bank is pleased to support WMHT programming that highlights the arts, and we invite you to do the same. I'm Matt Rogowitz, and this is AHA, a house for arts, a place for all things creative. We last visited Art Omai in 2018, and since then, there's been quite a few changes. Take a look. Art Omai is a sculpture and architecture park. We exhibit works by architects who haven't made uh, work to be exhibited outdoors, so that's, it's incredibly exciting to commission those projects. What, what Art Omai started with was a residency program for visual artists. That was 31 years ago, in a barn. And since then, we've added four other residencies, writers, musicians, dancers, and architects, with houses to stay in, this beautiful park to, to be inspired by, uh, and this visitor center with a gallery. So it's, it's grown a lot. One of the biggest things that's happened since 2018 is that during the pandemic, the public really discovered us as a place of refuge, and we had a literal explosion of visitors. What's also changed since 2018 is that we are now a co-executive director team instead of just me. So uh, my co-executive director, Jeremy Adams, has just brought an amazing, it's just an amazing partnership. It's so nice to share. I recommend it to every nonprofit. We're no relation. Um... People can get confused about that sometimes. Uh, I joined Art Oh My in 2019 uh, in the development department uh, right before COVID hit. Uh, just last year, I was fortunate enough to be able to step into this co-executive director position with Ruth. We get to be a little more gracious. We get to take a breath. I can say, Jeremy, I need a, I need a minute, you know? And we get to, to kind of approach things more authentically. I think it's just really, it's a great model. Since 2018, we hired uh, two curators, one for the architecture side of the park and the architecture residency, Julia Vanden Hout, and also Sarah O'Keefe. The exhibition that we're in right now is Pippa Garner, Sell Yourself. It's an exhibition um, that I have wanted to do for some time. Pippa is an artist who trained originally as a car designer. Pippa is somebody who I think is so important for understanding West Coast conceptualism, taking up advertising culture, taking up masculinity, taking up car culture. I'm personally a big fan of Pippa's work because behind its seriousness and its social commentary and its, its dealing with the power of marketing and branding and, and the power of communication, it's all done with this wry sense of humor. You'll see the work that she's making up until the present day, which is exciting. We worked with her to commission um, her most recent conceptual car, which is uh, called Haul and Ass, exclamation mark. What it is, is a return to the work that she made 50 years ago, or conceived of 50 years ago, backwards car. 
She was perfecting this trick, which is something that she's long been interested in and is still quite interested in, which is how do you follow the letter of the law while totally undermining it in spirit? These days, at 81, she's not able to flip cars in the way she used to. So we enlisted the help of Arcana, which is a really wonderful fabrication shop. We followed her instructions and worked with her every step of the way to um, take the Ford Ranger off of its chassis and rotate it 180 degrees and weld it back together so it's fully functional. And Pippa was very clear that the work needed to have super-sized truck nuts. We did ask her uh, if she wanted us to make them in a bespoke way, and she wanted, um, you know, in the way that a lot of her work engages mass-produced icons, she wanted them to be the kind of mass-produced variety, um, which there's a huge industry for it here. It's, it's a very American um, object, actually. So the truck nuts that we have here, um, they very proudly say, made in the USA. And there's various bumper stickers uh, which Pippa selected that are on the truck. One of them, which is a sticker that Pippa has returned to a few times, it's, it's from the 70s. Um, it says, women should be free. And then it says in parentheses, no charge. Which for Pippa, and I think this is something that um, is true of most of her work, she's both toying with the idea of liberation, but also pointing to the way that liberation, at least within America as we know it is often commodified back to us. She's been working with t-shirts for a long time, but since 2005 she started a series which is called Shirt Storm, uh, which is a series that she started after she started to lose her vision. She, when she was in Vietnam, was sprayed with Agent Orange, which led to glaucoma, and it's part of why she's going blind right now. She used to produce these really carefully rendered graphite drawings. But she started to produce these t-shirts a day. It's a daily practice. She uses iron-on letters. She's often tinkering with phrases that are familiar and making them into something strange, often with a kind of biting sense of humor. We do have an exciting new project which is just starting up in Chatham. It's going to end up being about 18 exhibition pavilions for contemporary artists and or collectors of contemporary art. Um, these pavilions will be designed by internationally renowned architects under the auspices of the artist or the collector. And what it's really going to allow is either the artist or the collectors an opportunity to showcase their work in exactly the way that they envision it. We are looking to break ground early 2024 with our goal of having the first pavilions and visitor center open sometime around about mid to late 2025. Every time you come here, you'll see something different. Right now, you can see the provocations from Pippa Garner, which I promise do not disappoint. Um, but every time you come back here, you'll encounter something different. We're really trying to work with artists to stretch the bounds of what you might expect. So come here and expect the unexpected. Stephen Tyson is an artist and educator in Saratoga Springs. In addition to his work in painting, sculpture, and photography, Stephen believes deeply in the power of community. Here's Jade Warwick with more. How would you describe yourself artistically? Mm. That's a great question. Uh, I see myself as a, a creative. I'll start with creativity, number one. Uh, the importance of that is because it doesn't limit you mm. to how you express yourself. And so I can work in a variety of different media, whether it's digital or whether it's paint on canvas or illustration. Um, I just like the idea of being able to be free to use whatever medium best allows me to express myself. Got to have the freedom, you know, just be relaxed. That's how you go. Mm -hmm. So what about themes of your work? Like, does your work follow a certain theme, or are you inspired by any outside influences that show within your work? There isn't a particular theme uh, when it comes to my work. I would say I've been inspired by a variety of different types of art, but not only art, but also in the areas of science. For example, photomicroscopy. 
looking at cells, looking at things that can't be seen uh, with the unaided eye. The idea of dots and patterns and being able to see those in nature, but also to see how those are expressed in various cultures around the world uh, has given me the freedom to create connections uh, in ways that were not easily um, clear to me when I was very young, because I love to do cartoons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I love to do illustration caricatures. Uh, people like uh, Al Hirschfeld, who used to be an illustrator uh, with the New York Times, uh, with his beautiful lines and movement. Mm -hmm. Those inspired me. But as I began to discover uh, Australian Aboriginal uh, Dreamtime art in dots and, and the way in which this related to uh, worlds and existence that go beyond uh, the um, everyday, uh, that connect generations, that move through time. To me, this was liberating. Mm. And so I find that by connecting dots, lines, science, art, uh, and also music, because music has a very strong vibratory effect uh, on me and, of course, people in general. And so by fusing these together in, in, in a creative way, it allows me to go beyond the limitations of any particular time and place, but extend my interests and my expressions to go uh, around the world and around the universe in many ways. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. So that unity and connection piece is extremely important to your work. Absolutely, absolutely. And the reason why it's also important because it is undergirded by a philosophy uh, of bringing people together, bringing communities together. Uh, and part of this came through um, the environment in which I was raised. Mm. Uh, we had a lot of music, we had a lot of art, but there was always a social consciousness uh, that came from my parents uh, and, and was instilled in me the importance of family. However you define family, family was by choice, by spirit, by a way of linking people together and finding the best values in each person and bringing those out, raising them up, and finding that everyone has something to contribute. And when I was very young, I had the opportunity to see Martin Luther King uh, at Hunter College. And the way in which people came together around this idea of uplift, of support of one another, to see beyond individual differences, embracing them, acknowledging them, but not being limited by them to find higher values uh, in community with one another. And so I think my work, if there is an underlying theme, it's about the freedom of expression. Uh, it is also recognizing and observing things in nature, uh, in human behavior, uh, and community in general, and finding the best values out of those situations in order to bring them to light and to show the opportunity to use these as a catalyst mm. for change and positive transformation. And I think that the arts are a vehicle for that kind of transformation that has a positive value for humanity. Oh, I 100% agree. Mm -hmm. Art truly can change and shift cultures. It is one of our leading forces with that. Yes, well, Thank you, absolutely. that's beautiful. You have a heavy like hand in the education within the arts. So mm -hmm. give us a little bit about like, why is education important in the arts and mm -hmm. what's your favorite part about being an arts educator? <laughs> well, I started out um, working for a theater and dance service organization in New York City. Being an administrator in, in that context um, had, had a lot of value in it. But one thing that I, I noticed is that I wanted to do something that allowed me to use the visual arts in a way that, uh, something that I really love, uh, in a way that could inspire people, inspire young people. And so I was at a uh, Brooklyn Museum retrospective of the work of Romare Bearden. Coincidentally, somebody came over to me and said, hey, there's um, a principal in the Bronx that's looking for an art uh, teacher. Would you be interested? And I had completed my graduate work, and I said, yeah, I would be interested, and went up there at the interview, and that launched my uh, academic career, you might say, oh. my interest in education. Uh, and so uh, I did that, and it was great because I had a chance to work with uh, young children who um, 
did not necessarily see art as a career pathway. They were just enjoying the idea of creating. And I would always introduce something that had to do with art history. I tried to provide a historical context so they can understand how the arts developed, the different communities that the arts developed, uh, and to recognize that they also had something to contribute, something to say. And so when my students, some of whom were um, some of the early hip hop uh, break dancers and so forth, uh, like the New York City Breakers, and one of my students was a member of that, uh, I would use the classroom after school uh, uh, to have them work on developing a spring festival of the arts. So we would create uh, backdrops for the stage. We would, uh, they would practice their, their break dancing in the, in the, in the room. Uh, and this is back in the, in, the, in the early 80s. And then also poetry, script writing. Uh, and it was an incredible coming together of various aspects of the arts, along with my colleagues, you know, who helped to um, work with these young people. So that really excited me, the idea that uh, if we could find ways to create opportunities for uh, young people and also their parents to see the viability of the arts, you know, that this is something that, that could be feasible if we put the energy and put the pieces in place that allowed this to manifest. And yeah. so that's been really exciting for me. And I've continued to do that in a variety of ways. It's one of the best parts. Yes. And you're also like, tell the parents, hey, look at me, I used to also be a little kid <laughs> yes. who was in the same position, who just strived to just find creativity. And now I'm a very successful artist trying to then pass it on. Yes. So it's just like, look right in front of you, who's trying to teach? Like, it's true, you really can mm -hmm. be a successful career-driven artist. Absolutely. It's gotta break that stereotype. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I know you're involved with Black Dimensions Art in mm -hmm. Hamilton Hill. Want to mm -hmm. give us a little bit of your background with those two organizations? Oh, listen, one of the things that I've really enjoyed coming to the Capital Region uh, 25 years ago uh, was being introduced to Black Dimensions in Art and the Hamilton Hill Art Center. I can't say enough about the people who have been involved with that, uh, those organizations. Uh, Margaret Cunningham uh, being one of the key founders, not only the Hamilton Hill Art Center, uh, Mickey Kahn as well, both of them were part of the founding of the Black Dimensions in Art, which grew out of Black Arts in, uh, Incorporated. This organization today is giving opportunities for artists who are international. They're giving opportunities for young people to learn from professionals. Uh, they are also, and specifically Black Dimensions in Art, one of the things that we've done is we've partnered with uh, SUNY Schenectady. I developed a program called Art Through the Microscope where the young people at Trinity Alliance did observational studies of different types of cells through the microscope. And then they did not only observational drawings, but also then a creative version inspired by what they observed. Wow. And what this did, Jade, was it gave young people an opportunity not only to be creative, but also to see the importance of science and creativity working together. Wow, that's great. Great mm -hmm. resources there. And mm -hmm. does Black Dimension Arts or Hamilton Hill have any events or programs coming up that you think the audience should know about? Well, I can speak specifically to um, Black Dimensions and Art. We have coming up a photographic exhibition at the Art Center in Troy. We have our 50th anniversary exhibition, which is going to be at the Albany Institute of History and Art. Uh, and there are many other things. And right now we're working on a documentary film in partnership with the co-creation initiative at Skidmore College through the MDocs program. So awesome. we're very thrilled about that as well. Well, sounds great. Well, folks need to check Black Dimensions Art out, Hamilton Hill, and your work personally. And thank you again for joining us. Oh, thank you, Jay. <laughs> thank Appreciate you. being here. Please welcome Hilltop. Help but you take the pain and make it good Cause when I'm alone I cannot help myself I don't wanna be 
little ball and all I see is that blissful wall of sound Thanks for joining us. For more arts, visit wmht.org slash aha, and be sure to connect with us on social. I'm Matt Rogowitz. Thanks for watching. Funding for AHA has been provided by your contribution and by contributions to the WMHT Venture Fund. Contributors include the Leo Cox Beach Philanthropic Foundation, Chet and Karen Alpelka, Robert and Doris fisher Melisardi, and the Robeson Family Foundation. At m and Bank, we understand that the vitality of our communities is crucial to our continued success. That's why we take an active role in our community. MIT Bank is pleased to support WMHT programming that highlights the arts and we invite you to do the same.